All right, so we're going to look at adding and subtracting decimals. So we've already seen how to add and subtract with whole numbers. Decimals is no different. Remember that a decimal is just another way to represent a fraction or a rational number. Well, when it comes to adding them, we're going to do the exact same thing. We also said that decimals were another way to represent fractions. And in order to add and subtract fractions, you had to have the same denominator. Well, in this case, we will always have the same denominator when we are adding and subtracting decimals because our denominators will be based off of the place values that we're in. And we can always add on zeros or remove zeros that are at the end of a number in order to have the same denominator. Let's look at an example. So let's say I had the number 5.02 and I wanted to add to it 3.032. Well, in this example, notice how I line things up with the decimal. Whenever you're adding and subtracting decimals, you want to line up your numbers based off the decimal. The reason for this is so that everything will be placed by its place value. All the ones are together. If you did say that this had a 10 in front of it, uh, let's just add one in. Let's make this a 15 instead. The tens places are together. The ones place are together. The tenths, the hundredths, and the thousandths. Well, this first number doesn't have a thousandth value. It doesn't have a value in the thousandths place, placeholder. Well, that's okay. We can always add a zero so that it now does. And that makes things easier to add. Sometimes people don't even need to put the zero there as a placeholder. They just realize that, hey, there's no thousands here, but there is here, so I'll just have two. Right? So when you get to this point, once everything's lined up and you have uh, placeholders, for, uh, zero placeholders if you need to, you can just add. The same thing will be done with subtraction that we'll see in our next example. But let's finish this for now. So as you added before, you started off with the rightmost end and worked your way up. Correct? That's right, you did. So when we add this, we get 0 plus 2, and we get 2. 2 plus 3, we get 5. 0 plus 0, we get 0. The decimals are there, so we'll put our decimal. This also helps us keep track of where our decimal goes in our, in our answer if we line them up properly. Last, we have 5 plus 3, we get 8. And then one and no 10 value there, so we can do 1 plus 0, and so that's going to be 1. And so we end up with 18.052. Okay? Let's look at an example with subtraction. So we're going to do 5 minus 0.328. Okay? Well, the first number is just a whole number. There is no decimal there. Ah, but we talked about how you can um, represent a whole number as a decimal by adding a decimal in. And if you want to, you can add zeros there. How many zeros would we want to add in this case? Four? We could add four, but if we did, we'd have to add another one here. So how about we just add three? Because we went to the thousands place in the second part, and sub uh, subtracted. Let's have it go to the thousands place in our first number. All right, our decimals are lined up. And for some people, it's very important for them to put a zero here just so they can visually see it. And that is fine. Our answer, we know that the decimal will go in the same spot as the others because it's all lined up exactly how it should be. And so now all we have to do now is subtract as we normally did. You can look at this as 5,000 minus 328 if you wanted to. And just remember where the decimal goes. That will also be another way to make this easier for a lot of people. Well, remember when we subtracted it, we borrowed until um, we got to where we needed. So in this case, 0 minus 8, we can't do. So we go to the next level, uh, which we still won't be able to do. Go to the next level, we still won't be able to do. Go to the 5, we can make this become a 4. We can make this become a 9. We can make that become a 9. And we can make that become a 10. So I just went all the way across the borrow and brought it back. I always do it that way just to make it easier. If you're used to doing one at a time to borrow, that is okay as well. Do whatever you need to. So we get 10 minus 8, we end up with 2. 
9 minus 2, we end up with 7. 9 minus 3, we end up with 6. 4 minus 0, we end up with 4. So there is our answer, 4.672. Now that is how you add and subtract decimals. Make sure you line up the decimals first. Add or remove extra zeros if you need to, so that you, all your place values are covered in both numbers that you're adding. If you're adding multiple numbers, do it for all the numbers. When you're subtracting, we have the exact same thing, <clears throat> where you have to line up your decimals. Just remember that if you need to borrow, borrow all the way and then bring it back. All right, so that's adding subtracting with decimals. I will see you soon.